Hello everyone and welcome to a bit of Prehistoric Planet 1 uh, content. So, uh, I was thinking of doing like reviews of the whole episodes, but um, I'll, I'll do that with Season 2 as it'll be much fresher to people. And you, who knows, you guys have probably seen uh, reviews and and the, and the sort of, plan uh, of Prehistoric Planet um, Season 1 already. So, um... I was thinking, let's just cover all the species, get you up to speed on what animals have been featured in the show. And so, yeah, let's get into it. And so we are starting with episode one, coasts, focusing on the coastlines and shallow seas of the prehistoric planet. And the first animal we see is, of course, Tyrannosaurus rex, the largest land predator of the, of the Maastrichtian, at least I think it is. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure it is actually. I don't know if there are any larger creatures at the end of the time, but um, T Rex, most famous dinosaur of all time, probably the best studied dinosaur of, um, so far, and yeah, looking great in its paleo accurate form. Well, mostly, I mean, it's got all the stuff, it's got the lizard like lips, the muscle, um, the cut, the uh, like the ridges and stuff, the bony ridges above the eyes. Um, I don't know if the pecno feather, uh, well, the fibrous hairs on the body, I don't know if that's actually still a thing, but, um, it could be. Um, next up we have Archelon, a large protostegid sea turtle of the western interior seaway that split North America during the Cretaceous. And yeah, it's great to see it, designed off after a leatherback turtle, judging by the set. Sail shell. <laughs> um, then we move to Morocco with some pterosaurs, and the first is the pterodactyloid Tathy Draco. Um, looking fantastic here. This is the female. Uh, the males are elsewhere in the in the scene. Um, then we meet Phosphato Draco, a as darkid of the formation. So much like Ketokoatlas and Hatsigopteryx, which we'll get to later. And, of course, Alcyone, which we focus on as hatchlings, but the adults were around. <laughs> they were around, but not focused on. Then we head to the drowned continent of Zealandia to meet Turangisaurus, a melasmosaurid um, that roams that section of the ocean. And we see it swallowing some gastroliths, um, displaying to the opposite sex, and, um, of course, um, courtship as well. And then we meet Mosasaurus, Hoffmanii, or is it Hoffmani? It's one of the two. Um, swimming through the oceans of the North Atlantic and Mediterranean. Um, yeah, it's a fantastic animal to see, and we do see it with its lizard-like characteristics, the theorized colorful skin in the breeding season, the two rows of teeth on the top jaw, the lizard-like tongue. It's also got the fluke, the um, correct fluke, unlike um, Jurassic World, which had a very crocodilian um, sort of tail. But here they are displayed as true whale lizards. Um, we also see our little pycnodont fish friend. Um, who cleans the Mosasaur. Then to the d dark waters on the coast of North America, I think it was. Was it the coast of North America or was it somewhere else? It, it was somewhere in the ocean where we see the displays of scaphitid ammonites using bioluminescence to, um, court, to go through courtship with males and females. Um, displaying in synchrony, at least hopefully in synchrony, because if not, the male would be rejected. And the last species of coast was Kai Kai Falu, an Antarctic um, or Southern Ocean Mosasaurid, shown here with, I've heard is a moderately shorter tail than what it would have had, um, but either way, it was cool to see, you get a bit more diversity in the Mosasaurs. Moving on to deserts, one of my favourite episodes. Like, I think 
deserts and forests might might be my favourites. Um, but that's just me. I don't know. Um, we see Dreadnoughtus, the great South American titanosaur that fears nothing. Um, at least that's what the name says. It could fear something. Um, possibly its own kind. Because we see the theorized um, air sacs that inflate along the necks in displays. Um, and yeah, just a really cool species to see. I noticed that a lot of species in Prehistoric Planet happen to also show up in Jurassic World Dominion and so we got a taste of what artistic license um, gives these dinosaurs to look like well makes these dinosaurs look and what um, paleontologists think they actually look like so we get two different perspectives whichever one's right we'll stick with one of them <laughs> um, then we see Tarbosaurus the Asian relative of Tyrannosaurus rex with this nice parenti like pattern and also with those um, fibrous hairs going along the the body yeah just chilling we also see velociraptor um, in its accurate size with plenty of feathers too um, it is shown that they hunted in packs but it's often theorized that um, Velociraptor may have been a, a lone hunter. I mean, it's, uh, it would certainly have be, been capable of it. Um, in the Namek formation, there were plenty of smaller prey items. But like in real life, um, some predators will team up um, to take down larger prey. So whether Velociraptor was the same, who knows? I mean, I know cheetahs will um, form coalitions. I mean, that's between siblings. But um, whether Velociraptor would do the same as like Harris Hawks do, where related individuals will work together to hunt prey, who knows? We then see Mononychus in its barn owl appearance. Um, I do like how they took inspiration from many real animals to design some of the, the dinosaurs in this show. It's, it's, a, it's a really fun idea, just basing um, animal like the prehistoric life of animals that we have today like i know the micro raptor in prehistoric kingdom looks to be based off a satin bowerbird which is one of the prettier birds that you can find here in australia yeah so i thought that was pretty cool when i noticed that so the mononychus which means single giant claw or, or just single claw i mean that could be it <laughs> and using it to break into a hollow log with termites and using a long prehensile tongue. Then we see some enantiornithines, um, an ancient type of bird that is seen to look like a sparrow somewhat. But we don't get too much screen time of the enantiornithines. Like they show up every now and then throughout um, deserts and fresh water. Like usually in some of the Asian scenes, you'll see the enantiornithines, but um, not really um, too often throughout the show as a whole. Um, then we see Bars Boldia, a Mongolian hadrosaur, which is one of the species that was first shown for the Minecraft add-on claws, which will um, be releasing in a few months' time. Uh, at least I think so. Compicraft, could you... Uh, Confirm on that, please. <laughs> I mean, I think it's in summer, but I'm excited for Bars Boldia in that. But Bars Boldia is in Prehistoric Planet. Yep. <laughs> now we see Namectosaurus, one of the many sauropods of the Namek formation. We also see several other species that we'll get to individually. So um, we see Tarchia, a species that will be showing up in Season 2 in a more prominent role. At least I think it's Tarchia. It could be Cychania as well. Right, what if it's not... <laughs> Imagine if it is Cychania and we see Tarchia um, in Season 2 instead looking very different to this. Who knows? Then we see the Mongolian Titan. Um, it is, I would say, perhaps semi-fictional. I, I don't want to make too many bold assumptions here, but... Um, there was a large footprint found in Mongolia um, a little while back, and I don't think it was that of Nemectosaurus or some other species. Like, I don't even know if they found the skeleton of what the footprint belongs to. 
So that could be what they're basing the Mongolian Tyson off here, just those large footprints that were found. But um, yeah, it was a cool species to see. Um, just like imagining what dinosaur could live there is actually pretty good. <laughs> we head over to Morocco um, to see the Barbarodactylus, a large nyctosaurid um, pterosaur that looks very much like its more famous relative, Nyctosaurus. Um, however, it's off. I don't, did it really have a crest that big? I don't know, but um, they, I'm just going to go off what the show said, and it did. <laughs> but paleontology is always evolving, so it, maybe it did, maybe it didn't, but we'll, we may never know. <laughs> and then lastly, to South America, um, to see Cicernosaurus. And that was the last animal of deserts. Then we move to fresh water. Um, I do love the starting sequence of fresh water, like these canyons that we will see in the claws add-on. Um, going off the trailer. Yeah, this is that add-on's going to be so cool because it's merging prehistoric planet with Minecraft. Uh, I want to see more prehistoric planet in games. Like, if we could get a prehistoric planet game, that would be awesome. So cool. So we see these Asian as dark is like I don't know what these are. They could be um whatever species. If you if you know what it it's called, um do leave it in the comments below. I'd like to know what this is. Then we move to Dinochirus, the large well, the largest of the Ornithomimids, so Gallimimus, Ornithomimus, part of that group. And seen feeding on Pond weed, scratching itself on a tree, and fertilizing the local um, plant life. Then we move to South Africa with Quetzalcoatlus. I, I, when I saw that, I, I was just like, South Africa? Quetzalcoatlus? I thought Quetzalcoatlus was, was from North America. But given its size, I imagine it would probably have moved around the world a, a few times. Because when you're that big, you're able to. So perhaps it did. I don't know what evidence there is to suggest it, but um, it it there is potential. Now we head to Madagascar for the first time in Prehistoric Planet, where we see Mashikasaurus hunting some crabs, and Beelzebufo, the largest frog that has been discovered so far, I believe. But um, yeah, I, I was really happy when I saw this guy in the trailer for Season 1. I thought it was such a fun idea, bringing Beelzebufo into a documentary. Again, like, I think it's been in a documentary before. But, um, yeah, seeing it here is really cool too. Moving on to the second last episode of the series, Ice Worlds, focusing on the North and South Poles of the planet. So we first had this Arctic Dromaeosaur. I do not know what species this is. Um... I've seen people say it's Dromaeosaurus itself, but um, I don't know. Whatever it is, um, leave it in leave it in the comments below if it has a name. Um, then we see it hunting Edmontosaurus, um, one of the most famous hydrosaurs of North America, and one of the most prominent too because it was all over the place. Then we see Ornithomimus with their characteristic mohawks of the show. Yeah, it's great that we got to see an Ornithomimid, and the fact it wasn't teased in the trailer um, gives me hope that there are probably many other species that will appear in Prehistoric Planet 2 that have not been shown in the trailers just yet. Like, who knows? We may get a few surprises. Then we see Allura Titan, um, the Russian Hadrosaur, or Siberian Hadrosaur, um, from... Oh, well... <laughs> From, I've already said where it's from. Anyway, going to a volcanic valley to lay their eggs and the volcanic soil incubates them. And we're getting, going, getting a similar sort of situation with Isosaurus in Season 2 where they will venture into a large volcanic crater and lay their eggs in the volcanic soil. Then we see a Troodontid um, in the North American forest during a forest fire. Um... I do not know which Troodontid it is, because Troodon is a wastebasket ta taxon that I know of. Um, maybe Troodon formosus is still a thing. I, 
let me know. <laughs> but I do not know which troodontid this is. Um, I'm thinking it's like Stenonychosaurus or... Um, I mean, it can't be Pectinodon. That's in Season 2 and looks very different to this. But whatever it is, it was hunting for a mammal that is possibly Cymolodon. Um, I've seen people suggest. Yeah. Moving on to Antarctica, where we see Antarctopelta, a small nodosaurid of the continent. And we are returning to Antarctica in Season 2 with the Snow Hill, with Snow Hill Island. Um, the Snow Hill Island formation with um, Imperobata and Trinosaura. And then we see this Antarctic Hadrosaur. Uh, like, I don't know. What, were there Hadrosaurs in Antarctica? I, I don't know. Like, I really have no idea. I mean, that could have been. Like, we got a lot of ice to shift to see what um, lived there. Then we move to the final sequence where we find Pachyrhinosaurus, one of my personal favourite ceratopsians, due to its large, thick nose. And, um, yeah, it's just a cool species. Being hunted by Nanuxaurus, the Arctic Tyrannosaur. And moving on to the last of the episodes, Forests, where we cover the forests of the planet, from rainforest to temperate forest, um, boreal forests, all sorts of forests. Starting off in South America with Ostroposeidon, um, a large titanosaur which is seen knocking down trees to get the softer leaves of the, of the top branches. Then to North America with Triceratops, venturing into a cave to find um, minerals to cure the to like to neutralize the toxins in their stomachs that they get from their um, plant vegetarian diet. Um, we see possibly one of the most entertaining scenes in all of Prehistoric Planet. Um, I, I, the whole show was entertain. Was it? The whole thing was entertaining. It's just this one was funny. <laughs> yeah, seeing Carnotaurus. Um, like, I really do not know if this was if this was true. That would be brilliant if if Carnotaurus actually displayed like this. That that would be fun. Like nature can be quirky sometimes. And seeing Carnotaurus do this would be brilliant. <laughs> yeah, waving their arms around due to flexible, um, well, individually movable so um, ball and socket joints with plenty of muscle behind them. So they use them a lot. So whether they used it in a waving fashion, um, displaying bright colors, I do not know. But it <laughs> anything's possible when it comes to prehistory. Like, we do not know. Then to the temperate forests of um, East Asia in a ginkgo forest where we find Carithoraptor, an oviraptorid, and the only oviraptorid in the series. Um, whether we'll get another one in season two, I don't know, but um, I hope we do because oviraptorids are a cool, look, cool looking, cool looking group. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do like them blue coloration too. I had no idea what these were in the trailer, but then we got a screenshot and it was Carithoraptor. Being hunted by Changosaurus, a species that had re ha uh, by the time of the show's release, was quite familiar to many in the dinosaur community due to its inclusion in Jurassic World Evolution 2. But seeing it with like these um, pycnofibers or the, the fuzziness um <laughs> With a bit of fuzz in comparison to its more scaly dragon-like form in um, Evolution 2. Um, yeah, just stalking through the forest, hunting raptors, you know, the usual. Then we head to a burnt, um, burnt down forest in North America in the Dinosaur Park formation where we see Atrociraptor, another notable species from Jurassic World Dominion. Um, fully feathered in a brown coloration. Now, in the in the teaser trailer for Forest, they did show the Atrociraptor. But given how in the trailer it looked more reddish, I thought it was Pyroraptor, and I was just like, oh, we're going to get the Pyroraptor origin story. <laughs> but um, remade with Pyroraptor actually there. Because um, a forest fire in southern France led to the discovery of Py 
a Pyroraptor. At least that's what Jurassic World Evolution 2 said. I think that is true. Um, but yeah, I was hopeful that it was um, Pyroraptor. But hey, it's still a Raptor from Jurassic World Dominion. Um, and then we see Anodontosaurus. A good look at an Ankylosaur in the show. Um, eating charcoal, which is actually an interesting theory. Not going to lie. But it's possible. As, I'm, as I keep saying throughout this video, anything's possible in prehistory. Give it a chance. <laughs> then we head to another forest in Asia where we find Therizinosaurus in pretty good um, quantity this time. It was in the desert waterhole scene, but we got a closer look in the, the forest episode. Moving to Hatzeg Island where we find several small dinosaurs and a few large reptiles. So the first is Telmatosaurus, a little... Hadrosaurid, that does look very similar to the Tethys Hadros that we're getting in Season 2. Just the Tethys Hadros has a much sharper bill. Or beak. Um, then we see Zalmoxes, the last of a very ancient line of dinosaurs, as it's said in the show. And I have heard that elsewhere as well. We then see Paluda Titan, one of the um, few sauropods on Hatzeg Island. The other was Magyarosaurus. I mean, there could have been another one, but um, Polluter Titan and Magyarosaurus are the only ones I know of. Um, and then we see Hatzegopteryx flying out into the sky and towards the sun. And you know what would be a really fun transition is if the Islands episode begins where Forrest left off and this Hatzegopteryx um, goes off to court the female. <laughs> like, that would be fun. Like, if they did a transition like that, and the Hatsugopteryx just stopped by, but a little bit more of Hatsug Island, caught as Almoxies and courted the female with it. I, it. What it's courting the female with is very much looking like as Almoxies. You know, it would be funny. That's Almoxies that's flown down the river. Hatsugopteryx just snatches it. <laughs> and, yeah, like, if they're showing Zalmoxies as well, it is a possibility that it's going to meet a similar fate to Zalmoxes in the first season. But that is all uh, 53 species that I could find for Prehistoric Planet Season 1. So 53 species. That's a lot. <laughs> I mean, whatever the lizard was in, de in deserts could make it 54, but... Um, that is all the species I could identify, oh, mostly, <laughs> because there are a few that were left up to speculation. But um, yeah, that is season one of Prehistoric Planet, all the species that were in it. And however many of those species cross over to season two, we've seen a couple. But who knows, many more could possibly make their return. I would personally like to see Dinocarus make its return. I just think it's a fun species that could get a bit more screen time. But if you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.